Hello friends, ACCA Performance Management Candidates. My name is Steve Willis. This video is by request. I've had several requests to do a past exam question on multiple limiting factors. I'm going to show you the exam technique you need to solve this type of problem and shadow prices. I'm looking at the past exam question cut and stitch. The link is below if you don't have this question in your exam kit. Now, if you find the video helpful, don't be afraid to throw down a like or subscribe to the channel to get more helpful videos. All right, guys, let's get started. I have the past exam question cut and stitch opened on my screen. You can find this in most exam question banks that are out there. In case you don't have this question, there's a link below. You can, you can open this in PDF. I'm going to take you through the first two requirements. We're going to find, by appropriate calculation, the optimal product mix. Then we're going to calculate the shadow price. I'd like to remind you that you will not have to draw the graph. I know you've been practicing that on your course, on you in your notes, but in the real exam, this is what it will look like. It will either be interpret what these lines mean, cal calcul or calculate something from the graph, okay? Now, before we go further, let me take you back one step and show you what this is all about. In a, in a question like this, you'll be given a graph. And the graph shows us the quantity of units, physical units. It's not monetary units. So let's imagine we have a product Y and a product X. And on this graph, we will then show limitations or constraints. So imagine product Y is limited by a maximum demand. So look at that. We would have a horizontal line showing a maximum demand. And then we will also be shown lines crossing okay, the diagram. Maybe it looks something like this. Maybe something like like this and then maybe there's even another line out here somewhere something like that okay those lines would be constraints of resource and these equations we would label them right so maybe we have demand for or, or the maximum amount of labor maybe this is material a maybe this is material b okay so the lines that we see are representing our constraints. Then what we'll do is label each point that we see in something called the feasibility region. So this would be point A, point B, point C, point D. Now, that tells us that we need to produce in this range. Okay. We could make all Ys. That would be over here. We could use up all of our resources and make all Ys. Look at this. In my little imaginary drawing, the demand ended up not being a, a, a constraint for us. I've shown the line, but it's not constraining my production plan. Okay? So we could make all Bs. I could make all product Y. I could make all product X. Or I could make some combination at that point. And we then express this range as the feasibility region. And that's simply going to be A, B, C, D. Now, the question is going to show you maybe a dotted line coming through the middle here. And they call that the ISO contribution line. That tells me that for any given contribution value, this combination of X's and Y's would deliver that, that contribution. 
Okay, so this is kind of the product mix that gives me the same contribution. I could make that amount of this amount of only y, this amount of only x, or anything along this line would be equal to the same contribution. Now, what we're going to do, we're trying to find the profit maximizing production plan. So we then extend this ISO contribution line, keeping it parallel to the line that's given in the question or the line that we've drawn across our graph. And we see that the point at which this ISO contribution line leaves the feasibility region would be my maximum contribution. So this combination of product Y and product X is going to maximize my contribution, therefore maximizing my profit. Guys, that's a, a very quick summary of what this graph is all about. Now that we had a quick look at the background to this topic, let's make quick work of this question. Okay, now we learn that cut and stitch makes two types of suits, two products, so how unusual, okay? And we have two resources, both of which are in short supply. We also learn that the management accountant has correctly produced the graph below. Now, theoretically, maybe they gave they could give you a question where it's done incorrectly and you would have to then identify all of the mistakes. Okay, now if we follow a step-by-step -step approach, first thing we can do is define, declare our variables. So we're going to let W equal product one, the work suits. We'll let L be product two, the lounge suits. Okay, so that's the first thing we can do. Second thing we can do, guys, is create a formula for each constraint. Now, this number right on the far right is going to be the maximum that we have, right? That's the maximum amount of hours, the maximum amount of square meters. This is going to be less than or equal to, right? Because it's a constraint. We can't go over, okay? It cannot go over. 1200 meters or 3500 hours okay and this figure here guys the seven and the five that's going to be the quantity of input so that's going to be the hours per product so if we interpret this it takes seven hours to do a work suit five hours to do a lounge suit <clears throat> and then two square meters for each type of suit. So, so again, we're looking at the physical units there. It's not monetary figures. And look at this, we have a maximum demand, okay, for the W. There's actually a slight mistake in this graph. If they wanted to be to do it perfectly, we should also have a non-negativity statement because W and L have to be greater than or equal to zero. We cannot produce negative number of suits. Guys, this is a very important line right here. This is the ISO, the, the contribution equation. So here we know that it's a 48. Now this is this time it's 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 monetary, right? We're looking at contribution. So the contribution equation is going to be 48 per W. That's Product W gives me contribution per unit of 48. Product L gives me contribution per unit of 40. Okay, now that we understand that, we can come back and we can look now at this wonderfully well-produced graph. And look at this, we have product L over here, that's the number of lounge suits. We have the number of work suits over here. We have the equations for the constraints crossing through the graph. We've got the maximum demand for one of the products. So that means that the feasibility region is this shape here. And maximum contribution will be the point where this ISO contribution line Okay, if we, if we hold that line parallel, 
and bring it away from point zero zero. The last place, the point that it touches when it leaves the feasibility region, moving it away right from that point zero is point B. So we can interpret the work from the accountant and we can see that the maximum contribution is point B, which is the intersection of the two equations for Taylor time, okay, and fabric right there. So now we can use some algebra and we can solve for the profit maximizing production plan. Then we can plug that figure into this equation for contribution, okay, and we can get the Pro, the, 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 the profit maximizing contribution from that. Here's a quick note. If they ask you, we want to find, we want, we, quick note. If they ask us to maximize profit or maximize contribution, the way we do that is always by maximizing contribution. Remember, the fixed costs are fixed. They do not change based on our production plan decision. So we're going to ignore any absorbed overheads per unit that we see in the question. One idiosyncrasy of the PM computer-based exams is that we don't know with 100% certainty if we'll get a spreadsheet or a word processor response option for this. Could be either. Hopefully it's the spreadsheet, but it doesn't have to be. We've seen in the past where they ask you to do some math inside of a word processing document. So let's do it both ways just to make sure your bases are covered. Now, we're just going to do it. I'm in the word processor. We're going to be logical. We're going to show the examiner our thought process. Okay, so we're doing part A and we know the optimal plan. Let's tell them. Okay, so let's just tell the marker what we are doing, showing it step by step. There's no need to use the scratch pad here. You can do all of your thinking and planning right in the word processing window and use your calculator. Your handheld calculator will go much faster than trying to use the on-screen calculator. Now we'll need to use the algebraic tool of solving simultaneous equations. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, hmm, I could turn the 2L into a 5L if I multiply both sides by 2.5, okay? So now all I have to do, let's tell the marker exactly what we're gonna do. Solve for W and L, and I'll just reproduce these. And let's just show that we're going to multiply this 2.5 multiplied by that. Okay. And so the product of that's going to be what? 5W. We do the math, we show the marking team our logical step-by-step -step process. Okay, now all we have to do is subtract one from the other. So now, subtract one from the other and we get 2W plus 0L, right? 5L minus 5L is zero is equal to 5,000, 500, excuse me, okay? Now we divide both sides by two, W is equal to 250. Okay, then using your calculator, you can plug in the 250 to any equation here and you can solve for the L. So we could then just say seven multiplied by 250 plus five L is equal to 3,500. We do the math and we discover that L is equal to 
three, five, zero. Guys, this is not the most elegant, it's the, not the most beautiful presentation I've ever done, but we're in the exam, we're under extreme time pressure. Just show the marking team your logic. Okay, and when we're all done down here, we can bold this out. Now, we have to get the profit maximizing contribution. So we'll tell the marketing team production plan is W equals 250, L equals 350, and now we can do maximum contribution. We just plug those figures into the contribution equation and that contribution equation was 48W, 40L. So we just type out our figures and we show that it's the $48 per unit times 250 plus $40 per unit times 350 gives me a maximum contribution of 26,000. Guys, that's a quick and easy way to get full credit in the word processing tool if you get such a question. Again, you won't have time to make it so beautiful to use tables, etc. If you can pull that off, more power to you. But if you can just do it nice and quickly like this, showing your logic, you'll get full credit. Team, if we get this question and we're given the spreadsheet tool, we'll do it essentially the same way, but maybe we will save a little bit of time using the spreadsheet to do the calculations for us. So it's going to look quite similar. We're going to tell the marking team that we're doing part A, always doing that, always labeling your workings, showing what you're doing. Okay, and we're going to then say essentially the same thing. Team, I'll just type the same thing that I would say in the word processor. So there we go. Now, what's the next step? Solve for L. Okay, and we will just now show the marking team what we're doing. Control copy. Copy, control, paste. And we'll do the same thing. We're showing our thought process here, 2.5, multiply both sides by 2.5. And don't be afraid to give any commentary that you need to the marking team. If you have any assumptions, state them. Maybe something is unclear in a question. If, if it's unclear to you, it's probably unclear to everybody else. So. Just state your assumptions and you're more likely to get partial credit in that case. Okay, so showing what we're doing, okay. Then that'll be equal to 5W plus 5L is equal to 1,000. this from the first equation, okay? And then we will get, oops, there we gotta put the 5L. So we're restating our equations. Maybe that looks better up here. I'll put it there. And now we can say that W is going to be equal to equals 500 divided by 2. Okay. Now we can say L is going to be equal to what? Now we can say L will be equal. We just pl plug the, the W into that. So Seven multiplied by two point 
250 plus 5L is equal to 3,500. So that's the equation. I'm just going to retype it so I can get busy doing then the algebra in the cell below. I need to visualize it before I can get started. There's no need to use the scratch pad. Just show your workings. Show the marking team what you're doing there. So L will be equal then. Now that I see the equation, I can visualize it and I can do the algebra. So it's going to be equal to 3,500 minus... 7 multiplied by 250, and now I have to divide both sides by 5. So let's just use the brackets to preserve order of operations. Divided by 5, that should be 350, and it is. Copy, paste. Now all we have to do, maximum contribution. In this instance, the marking team will look right into the cell. So all we have to do, that's going to be equal to to W multiplied by 48 plus L multiplied by 40. Just to be safe, let's put things into brackets. We know that multiplication happens first, but why not? Okay, and there we go. We get the correct answer. Guys, it's not the prettiest spreadsheet I've ever done in my life. But remember, there are no marks for financial modeling or for spreadsheet skills or for formatting. Okay, so if you do it this way, you're going to get the marks nice and nice and easily. Now, we can clean things up a little bit if we have a bit more time. We can bold that so the marking team can find it. And if we want to be a little bit more presentable, we could throw down a thousand separator. But that's not really going to give you a mark. The marking team can follow what we did step by by step so you'll get partial credit if there is any mistake and your answer after you made that mistake would be con assumed correct okay so guys there is the spreadsheet exam technique okay to solve the same problem let's look at part B now calculating the shadow price of labor of fabric. I'm going to show you how to do it for the tailor time, for the labor hours. You then apply the same approach at home, see if you can get it for the material. Okay, so remember the shadow price, I think of it as shadow contribution. And the shadow price tells us what is the incremental contribution we earn from adding one more unit of scarce resource into my system. Okay, so let me show you what I do. I will also use copy paste to save a lot of time. I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to grab this. Call this part B. Shadow prices. Okay, now We'll do tailor time first. And let's just tell the marking team what we're doing. One, add one more hour of tailor time to the equation. Copy. Paste. There we go. Change that out to a one, two. We solve for W and L. And now we can just do this. We have those figures from above, so I can copy that, copy that paste, change this one out to 5L, 5W, and 5L is equal to 3,000. Okay, now we can say that 2W plus 0L is now equal to 501. 
okay? And W will be equal to 501 divided by 2. Put an equal sign in front of that to turn it into a calculation. Okay, and now L will be equal to equals 3501 minus, open a bracket, okay, 7 multiplied. We have the W right there. Why not just grab it, okay? Right there above us in cell B31 divided by 5. And let's put the brackets in there. We missed out on a bracket, so... Very careful, order of operations. There we have it. So now it's very easy to calculate the contribution. Okay, now we can get the new contribution. So the new contribution will be equal. 48 multiplied by this plus 40 multiplied by this. Great, okay. Team, so the shadow price of labor, that's the incremental contribution from one more labor hour. Well, if we put one more labor hour into our system, we get that. Let's subtract the original contribution, which was 26,000. No reason you couldn't use the relative cell address there, and we get four. Guys, use that same approach to get the shadow price of material. Friends, there you have it. Shadow price and the multi-product limiting factor problem made easy in the CBE environment. Friends, there you have it. Solving shadow price and a multi-limiting factor type of scarce resource problem. Hope you found that helpful. If you did, please feel free to throw down a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos. This is Steve, signing out for now.